This is what you'd probably call a conventional trebuchet. There's a long arm, a short arm, and a counterweight, all separated by pivots. A projectile is attached to one end of the long arm via a sling, and the counterweight is raised. When the long arm is released, the counterweight drops and the projectile is flung into the air. So from this brief description of a trebuchet, you can probably work out that the energy stored by raising the counterweight, known as gravitational potential energy, is transferred to the projectile in the form of kinetic energy. Assuming the projectile can't be changed, for example, a trebuchet that can only launch tennis balls, in order to increase the kinetic energy of the projectile, we must increase the potential energy of the counterweight by either increasing its mass or increasing the height at which it's released, right? Okay, so last week I built the frame for the trebuchet with an axle height of one meter, so that can't be changed, and I've only got 10 kilograms worth of weighted plates. Let's go back to the prototype model. When this prototype trebuchet is ready to launch, the counterweight of 0.146 kilograms is raised 0.166 meters, giving a stored energy of 0.238 joules. With a projectile of mass 0.0011 kilograms, the end velocity should be 20.8 meters per second. By analyzing the frames of the video, I can calculate that the projectile traveled 0.211 meters in 0.02 seconds. As velocity is distance divided by time, the projectile was going 10.55 meters per second, almost half the predicted velocity, giving the trebuchet an efficiency of 51%. Okay, enough of the maths for a bit. How can I get the projectile to go faster without changing the counterweight or the frame height? Let's try fixing the counterweight pivot. This raises the counterweight an extra 68% higher than before. And as the height of the weight is a factor in the potential energy stored, the projectile should travel faster, right? Well, it doesn't. After analyzing the slow motion footage, the release velocity of the projectile was 9.05 meters per second, which is 14% slower than a conventional trebuchet. So let's take another look at the conventional trebuchet. When released, the counterweight falls vertically and almost comes to a complete stop before being pulled horizontally by the arm. This means that the potential energy of the weight before release is not only transferred to the kinetic energy of the projectile, but also the kinetic energy of the arm. So much so that it is able to accelerate the weight horizontally after the projectile is released. This means that for maximum efficiency, the counterweight and arm must be stationary at the point where the projectile is released. Which now makes sense why the fixed counterweight trebuchet is so inefficient. The counterweight and arm are travelling really fast when the projectile is released, which means they have a lot of kinetic energy which wasn't transferred to the projectile. Anyway, I carried out some research into some more modern trebuchet designs and came across what's known as a whipper trebuchet. A whipper trebuchet has a much shorter arm in comparison to a conventional trebuchet, which allows it to rotate a full 360 degrees. The counterweight is attached in a similar way using a pivot, but the larger difference is its launch position. The longer arm, which the projectile is attached to, is rotated nearly another 180 degrees past where a conventional trebuchet arm would be released from. This raises the counterweight up and above the main axle, and therefore increasing the gravitational potential energy, similar to the fixed counterweight trebuchet. But when released, the counterweight comes to almost a complete stop, just like the conventional trebuchet. As you can see, I designed this with many adjustment holes, as I couldn't find much information on arm ratios for this specific style of trebuchet. After some testing, I found a ratio that worked well and made a new counterweight arm to test. This new counterweight arm allowed me to test if having the counterweight closer to the arm at the release point would make much difference. And yes it does. This produced the fastest projectile velocity yet by 49% at 15.77 meters per second, 
with an energy transfer efficiency of 62.2%. Let's get building. My new CNC router opened up the possibility to build a six part layered centre section of the trebuchet arm. These layers were then glued together and housed the main bearings for a smooth, efficient rotation. They also had a suitable slot cut for the lightweight main arm to fit into, as well as an angled plate to prevent over rotation of the counterweight. The bearings were a tight fit on the axle and only slid on if the bearings were perfectly aligned, which is a good thing because having any plate in the bearing or shaft connection could result in the arm or counterweight rocking side to side and possibly hitting the frame. The only downside to this is that the frame must be disassembled to get the arm in or out because the bearings wouldn't slide easily along the main shaft. I then cut the curved counterweight arms out of some 18mm plywood which are by far the thickest pieces I have cut to date. The counterweight arms were then mounted to the main arm using a 20mm diameter stainless steel shaft which created a smooth pivot. Here you can see how that angled plywood centre section holds the counterweight arms at the correct angle so they don't come in contact with the main long arm. It was then time to add some weight, starting with 5kg. I was very hesitant to test it at first because without a projectile, the stored energy has nowhere to go apart from into the frame and arm, which causes the arm to bash against the stops and make some horrible noises. I then made a super basic release mechanism by looping some string around the counterweight axle which would be pulled off the end to release it. I then tied some string around a tennis ball for testing as I hadn't made a sling yet. Then placed it between the counterweight arm and the centre section and it was ready to launch. In three, two, one. Ooh, that went backwards quite far. I think I need a proper sling. The ball just came straight out of this little string thing I made. Put it by it. I'm gonna go grab the ball from back there and build a proper sling for it. The sling was made from a nylon strap and was a very basic cross shape that would wrap around the projectile when launched. The sling release pin consisted of a 3D printed PETG pin with a bolt down the centre of it for reinforcement. This was mounted to an adjustable plywood bracket to allow for release angle adjustments. If you're wondering how a trebuchet sling releases its projectile, it's surprisingly basic. The sling has two strings attached to it. One is fixed to the arm permanently, and the other simply loops around this pin. Then as the sling swings around, this loop gets pulled off the pin and the sling opens. I then added another 5kg plate to bring the total weight up to 10kg. First test with 10 kilogram counterweight and a tennis ball. In three, two, one. And I now know why this is called a whipper trebuchet. Let's watch that again. In three, two, one. From analyzing the footage, we can see that the 10 kilogram counterweight is raised 1.33 meters, storing 130.5 joules of gravitational potential energy. The tennis ball weighs 56 grams, so if the trebuchet is 100% efficient, the tennis ball release velocity should be 68.3 meters per second. However, by analyzing the frames from the video, I can calculate that the tennis ball traveled 0.85 meters in 0.02 seconds given a release velocity of 42.7 meters per second and an efficiency of 62.5%. Oh, and by the way, 42.7 meters per second is 95.6 miles per hour, which isn't bad for a first proper launch. Over the next day or so, I struggled with inconsistencies in trajectory angles. One launch will go sky high, and the next will go horizontally. I tried changing the length of the sling, I tried different release pin angles, and I even tried metal rings instead of a loop in the string over the release pin, but no such luck. And that's what a misfire looks like. 
until I went through all the slow motion footage. If you watch this shot frame by frame, it's pretty clear that the tennis ball is falling out of the sling before it's supposed to be released. In fact, if you zoom in on this shot, which I filmed in 4K, so excuse the bend in the arm due to the rolling shutter effect of the camera, you can clearly see that the tennis ball is falling out of the sling whilst both ends of the sling are still attached to the arm. So I redesigned the sling to properly cut the tennis ball and haven't had an issue since. Well, sort of. Let's talk about sling length. For the first proper launch, I used a sling length that held the tennis ball just in front of the main axle, which resulted in a projectile velocity of 42.7 meters per second. So let's see what a shorter sling length does. Straight away, I can see that there is far more energy still left in the trebuchet arm, as it is bouncing around. But how has this affected the release velocity? Well, according to my calculations, it's pretty much identical at 42.7 meters per second. How about a sling length which lines up the centre of the ball with the axle, aka the exact same length of the long arm? This launch looks almost perfect in comparison. The weight stalls at the bottom of the drop, then 0.04 seconds later, the arm stall and the release of the projectile occur simultaneously. But how much extra energy is transferred to the projectile when the arm doesn't oscillate after the launch, like it did with the short sling? Well, with this sling length, the release velocity was 43.04 meters per second, giving us a kinetic energy of 51.9 joules. The kinetic energy of the ball when using the short sling was 51.1 joules, meaning that the small arm wobble at the end of the throw stole about 1.5% of the ball's potential energy, which is quite a bit less than I initially expected. Right, let's take another break from the maths. Seriously, I can't believe that a hundred thousand of you have chosen to follow my endeavours into various engineering projects. And it would be great to end this video on a high. But there is something missing. I need to see a tennis ball do 100 miles per hour. Oh, and I might have lied about only having 10 kilograms worth of weighted plates. 15 kilo counterweight, tennis ball in three, two, one. Uh, so close, 99.8 miles per hour. How about adding some weight to the frame to stop it moving? 15 kilogram counterweight, tennis ball in three, two, one. Yes, 104 mile per hour tennis ball in less than half a second. I need to see that again. 15 kilogram counterweight, tennis ball in three, Two, one. So that's the end of this week's video. I've put a load of effort into trying to get this video done this week. Uh, it's been crazy amount of woodwork and also video editing, trying to work out all the velocities and everything. So if you enjoyed the video, it would be much appreciated if you could leave a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please click subscribe. A huge, huge, huge thanks to all of my patrons for supporting me. You guys seriously make these weekly videos possible and if you found this video interesting at all and want to support me then please head over to my Patreon page. Link will be in the description below. Thanks once again for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. I can't believe we reached 100,000 subscribers. It's just absolutely unbelievable and I will see you next week. Goodbye.